Hi everyone, welcome to this mini lecture on instruction. Our goal here is to cover three different instructional approaches and to identify some factors that contribute to high quality instruction. So first, what do we mean by instruction? In a previous lecture, I mentioned the word pedagogy and said it was the how of teaching. And then I said curricula was the what. But let's look at this again. Our textbook authors, Kaplan and Owings, say pedagogy is the art of teaching and includes instructional strategies, management techniques, and curriculum. So this definition is a bit more encompassing. They further distinguish instruction as the teacher's actions that bring the curriculum to life. So here, instruction is part of the larger construct of pedagogy. The three instructional approaches we will discuss today are based on learning theories, where learning is defined as the complex cognitive processes that happen when experience produces a change in knowledge or behavior. We will look at a behavioral approach, a cognitive approach, and a constructivist approach. You may already be familiar with some of these, and we touched on constructivism in a previous lecture. So let's begin. The behaviorist approach is influenced by the work of psychologist B.F. Skinner, whose work defined learning as a change in behavior brought about by experience. For Skinner, behavior is what a person does in a given situation. Skinner used operant conditioning to test his hypotheses which many of us have probably heard or read about. But of course, we don't treat students like lab animals, but we can use stimulus response principles and in instruction and learning tasks. So let's take a look. A behaviorist approach to instruction is grounded in these stimulus response or teacher does something and then student do so students do something. This principle, it begins by setting clear and specific goals. These goals inform teachers specifically about what students are expected to do. The content is broken down into steps and teachers provide clear and systematic praise when students behave or demonstrate what they have learned in a positive way. This is known as positive reinforcement or encouraging the desired behavior or learning with rewards. Teachers adapt the consequences to fit misbehavior or behavior that is not demonstrating the desired learning. There is a program used in many schools around the country called PBIS, or Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. Maybe some of you attended a school in which PBIS was in practice? Behaviorism may sound a bit simplistic or like training or conditioning, but I've learned that there are important and beneficial uses of the behaviorist approach for example, in counseling or in special education. One of the critiques of the behavioralist approach is that it is not appropriate for complex learning, only simple learning, and that there is little room for creativity. As well, scholars argue that it is a passive learning approach and that teachers tend to treat students like empty vessels that they fill with knowledge. Let's move on. The cognitive approach emerged as a response to behaviorism and considers how students think. The cognitive model is based on the analogy between the mind and a computer. It's sometimes called the information processing model. Cognitivism is about thinking or processes of the mind. So it is therefore distinguished from behaviorism, which is not concerned with thinking but with outward behavior. With the cognitive approach, knowledge students bring to learning is crucial. New information is connected with their background knowledge, and this is how learning is built. Cognitive practices include then activating students' background knowledge, 
focusing on what is most important in the content and connecting new knowledge to what students already know. Teachers do a lot of reviewing and repeating, and it's important to teach learning strategies. Scholars critique cognitive approaches, suggesting they do not account for outside influences. Some of those that we've studied would be SES, race, and gender. Additionally, students' background knowledge can be diverse, so that makes the task of activating background knowledge different, uh, difficult, and sometimes it excludes minority and diverse background students. Our third approach is the constructivist approach. It suggests that learners create their new understandings based on interaction between what they already know and believe and information and ideas with which they come into contact. Here, learning is a self-regulated process of making meaningful connections between the familiar and the new. Students are said to remember and learn what they find most relevant. Some constructivist practices include giving students choices that would help them determine what's relevant, right? Designing problem-based activities and having students apply new knowledge in creative ways. Some of the critique, critiques of constructivism include that students' interests are put before important content that they really need to be taught. Also, some scholars argue that it is not really a learning theory. Still others say that it is ethnocentric or an idea or approach that we use in our Western and first world contexts that may not be suitable for other contexts. But regardless of the teaching approach, there are certain attributes or qualities of high quality instruction. First and foremost, quality instruction must be designed and well planned out. Teachers must have thorough knowledge of their content areas and of pedagogy. And finally, high quality instruction takes into account who the students are. Our textbook authors suggest there are some marks of high quality instruction. For instance, it creates a culture for learning. It manages time and resources of the classroom. It is about communicating effectively with students. And it involves a reflective practice on the part of the teacher. A reflective practice is one in which the teacher is always evaluating, reevaluating, and revising. So I'm going to leave you here for now, equipped with some basic knowledge about instructional approaches and indicators of high quality instruction. There is further reading and activities for you in the weekly folder. Enjoy.